of our ministerial staff here at 2 p.m. on next Sunday. You don't want to miss that service. We're going to have a hallelujah, belly washing good time. I pray that you can not only be with us here at our morning worship, but next Sunday should be a sacrifice and try to make it at 2 o'clock to support the newest ministers that will be licensed here at the church. Amen. Facebook Live right now. It should go through, not through my wife's um, Facebook page, it should go through the church's Facebook. Have that been set up? So again, the Facebook page should be going through, opened up through our church's Facebook page and not the wife's Facebook page. And so in the future, anytime you want to see our service live, go to todwc.org. And to share it with your family and friends, especially that are out of state, our Facebook, our Facebook Live, our Strength with Live streaming is todwc.org. T-O-D-W-C and then just click on the Facebook icon especially for members that are traveling, todwc.org, and click on the Facebook icon in our website, and we'll go live. It's going to thank you. Thank you for um, Deacon Willis um, making that happen. Again, I, before we get started, I really want to um, instead of I put our hands together for our media team. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for our media team. God is blessing us immensely. We were live um, and strong during our Sunday school hour. And thank God for um, just our entire team. And I praise God for you. Let me take an opportunity to welcome you to the Temple of Deliverance Worship Center. And we just praise God because truly this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, yeah. If you woke up this morning, you ought to be rejoicing because of not necessarily who we are, but who he is. And we learned even this morning that a change on the inside will affect that which is on the outside. The God be the glory for the things that he has done and is doing. I am the senior pastor, Dr. Richard Clark, and my wife is the executive pastor, Dr. Shirley Clark. We have a team of believers here that love God and love people. We're going to be licensing four of our newest clergy to our ministerial staff on next, two, next Sunday at 2 p.m. I'm just excited what God is getting ready to do and what He's doing it. Facebook family, you're welcome to join us here at 2573 Claybake Road, Sweet Six, in the heart of Fairfield, California, 94533. If you want to see where the Holy Ghost is at, you better come on and hurry up here to get a good seat, especially on next Sunday. God give the glory. 
Father, we just thank you, Lord, so much. We're praying that you would take charge. I'm going to yield this service to you. And I'm praying that you would have your way and that you would speak and that you would move in a mighty way, that you would transform and change hearts today. We just praise you, honor, and adore you. We magnify your name. We lift up holy hands. And thank you, we live, move, and have our being. And we just thank you for what you're getting ready to do. But we thank you for what you've done already. And we're going to yield right now our hearts, our minds, and our service to you. Come on, give God a round of applause. Oh, come on. Come on, praise you. Amen. Amen.
Think about how great God has been, no matter how sinful we have been. Think about the chances that he has given us. Think about how many chances he gives us every day. In the amount of 24 hours, he gives us an abundance of chances we never deserve. He gives us the chance every day, every second to choose him. And then does it again the next day when he wakes you up again. Just think about how good God is. How great he has been to our fathers, our, our forefathers, our grandparents. Even through all the mess the world keep coming up with. He's been steadfast and unmovable. And it kind of goes into what I'm going to go into today. It's going to be Psalms 124. I'm going to read in one verse. Psalms 124, 124 in verse number one. Say amen with that. I want y'all to take this, this one single verse. Take it with you through the week and just think on it. Every time you get a quick break, just think about this one verse. And I guarantee you, if it works for me, it will change your whole mindset in history. And it reads, if it had not been the Lord who was on your side, yeah, yeah, yeah. now may Israel say. See, you have to, that's it, that's it. If it had not been the Lord that was on your side, just think of where you will be at today. Amen. I'm going to verse 2. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. See, you have, continue to read through this because I'm only going to stop there because it's a thought. I, I, I'm here to make you think about something that most people swear they think about but don't really grasp the, the gratitude of it. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Think about it, because if it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't be here today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your parents wouldn't have been here to have you, because the Lord has been in on our side since the beginning of time. Yeah. So everything from when it started to where it's at now, yeah, because yeah. the Lord was on our side. Yeah, yeah. So if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to stand here to give him praise today. So continue to think about that through the week when times get hard, when, when life hits you the hardest. Think about it. What if, what, what if the Lord wasn't on my side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 That's prayer. Lord God, we come in today. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you just for waking us up this morning, a day that was not promised to us, Lord God. We just thank you for the people here today, right now, Lord God. Strengthen their hearts, Lord God. Strengthen, strengthen their minds, Lord Jesus. Let them when they leave, Lord God. Let them be uh, surround them, Lord God, throughout the day, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray for the preach word right now, Lord Jesus. We pray for the singers right now, Lord God. We pray for the presence of God just to be in this place right now. In the name of Jesus. We just thank you and bless your holy name because it wasn't as for it was because like Willa said, if it wasn't for you, we would not be here, Lord Jesus. So we just thank you for that, Lord God. We just thank you every day, Lord Jesus, because we bless your holy name every day, Lord God. Because you are worthy. You are you are worthy of all praise, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
church 100% in Sunday school. Not 50%, not 60%, but 100% in Sunday school. Did you not know, when you really get on fire for the Lord, and when you really love God, guess what? You're going to want to do like a minister Peter, be here all the time. Our sister Vanessa, she just joined a few Sundays ago, and I look up, she's right here at 9 o'clock in Sunday school. That's the way you do it. That's the way you grow, grow, and go in the Lord. God is doing something phenomenal. This lesson this morning was taken from 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter, and it deals with David's sin and his punishment. But what's so significant about the sin, and I pose this to the Sunday church school, is that when did David sin? Did he sin when he did the act? Or was his sin before the act? And we discovered that his sin was premeditated. Yeah. It was before he even acted out. Can I just say this? Um, when Satan gets into your consciousness and, and you decide to wreak havoc on your mind and you decide to just pursue that endeavor, that's after the fact. The sin happens prior to the fact. And we sin more, way before we initiate the act. And so when you lie in your mind to sin, you just sin. And so the thing about it, we should keep Jesus in our mind. And so to make a long story short and so significant is that David, I wonder if he would have confessed if he would have never heard from the prophet Nathan. I don't think so. And sad to say, a lot of us Facebook fam, we cover up sin and we go covert because we're never caught. But you know what? You, 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 you may think you're hiding, but you can't hide because God is on that presence and he, he will find you out. So to make a long story short, Nathan told David a story and David confessed that he sinned. He was remorseful because he'd get caught. How many of us today have to get caught before God gets the glory? How many of us have to get caught before God just do what he wants to do in our lives? I don't want to wait to get caught. I want to voluntarily raise both hands up and say yes to Jesus. And the fact is, David said yes. It don't make no difference how you say it yes. The fact is, you need to say yes. He said yes to, to Jesus, and this is what happened. He repented, 
which means he changed his heart, he changed his mind. Then he was remorseful. Oh man. Then he was restored. Yeah. But that's all to deal with the inside. He repented, he was remorseful, he was restored. Well, what happens on the outside? There was um, what they call, what, what did they say? Reformation of lifestyle. In other words, as a result of the change on the inside, he changed on the outside. That's what reformation is. In Matthew 3, 8, it says, bring forth fruit meant for repentance. In other words, that's reformation. If your change on the inside is genuine, guess what? You're going to have a genuine change on the outside. The things you used to do, you're not going to do anymore. Places you used to go, you're not going to go anymore. Because something within me that holds the rain is something within me I cannot explain. Because of the authentic change on the inside, my God worked it out on the outside. Oh, come on, give God some praise. Our spiritual message. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. I just gotta um, I'm pretty sure um, Pastor First Lady trusts me. But, um, Like I said, I'm pretty sure that Pastor First Lady trusts me on um, doing these type of things. And I really appreciate God. I really appreciate being here. Um, as I look out into the audience and look at everyone, um, the energy is just off. Okay? Amen. Energy off. Amen. We can change it. We can rearrange that. We can get lively on Okay? We are free in Christ. We are not bound. We are not held down. And the only reason why we feel like that is because you won't lift your hands up. You won't move your feet. You won't turn around and stumble. Because the more you do that, you are worshiping our God. Okay? If we can go out throughout, throughout the week and lay down and suck around and mope around. Once we get to the house of God, we shall be energized and confident be energized. I got to love my boat somebody. I don't got nobody to love my boat, right? I would take you all the way there. Because when I like to kick it, when I like to be in company of good people and good atmosphere, guess what? I'm going to be that good atmosphere. If I go to a party, a club, a bar, my party house, if the energy off, I'm ready to go. Okay? So let's invite the Holy Spirit in here. He needs to be in here. He wants to be in here. Hallelujah. I just had to share that because that's how I feel. And that is what I do every day. And when I come to the church with my family, I want to party with my family. Amen. I don't like y'all to party with me, but when it's all that you know, it's kind of hard. And if the Holy Spirit ain't invited, what else are we going to do? We're just going to sit there, things are start messing up, all kind of mishaps and all kind of things. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to reign, if you allow the Holy Spirit to take over, you'll feel better. Your arms will feel better. Your head will feel better. Your brain will feel better. You can move differently. Your stomach don't hurt no more. You're not even sleepy no more. Everything that happened last week, all of a sudden goes away. You lift your hands up and you say, Lord, I thank you. I, Lord, I thank you. I don't, if you say it one time, now you can enter in. Now you can get into all of your space right there. And you won't feel so constricted and conflicted and loopy in the head. Lord, I thank you. Lord, you are welcome in my space. Lord, you are welcome in this house. Lord, you are welcome all up in my business. And once those 
fear is going to flow down, probably. You're going to feel better. That praise will get a little bit different. That praise will get better, should I say. Amen? Last week, um, Brother Peter was talking about how giving is worship. This morning, I worship God so well, I went and got cash to make sure that I had the food card. I could just put it in the envelope. Matter of fact, my client made me in cash. But I was so ready to give. Yeah. And those that did not have anything to give, I took my little extra one, let's get some change. Yeah. We're going to distribute this out. Because everybody is going to get something. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. we're supposed to be sharing. Yeah. Sharing is caring. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Remember this. This is NLT. So I kind of break it down. So that we can understand it. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants a few good seeds will get a small crop. So if you are planting a very small praise, what are you giving? Guess what you're going to get in return? Nothing really. But if you give a bigger praise, a bigger hallelujah, God said, sit back and smile at that. Yeah. He smiles. It makes him happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And you'll feel happy. You'll get happy, right? Yeah. But the one who plants generously right. will get a generous crop. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are, your praise is big, guess what you're going to get? You're not going to get some little guy saying, good job. <laughs> he honors that. And we need to honor and worship God in our praise, in our giving. Okay? Amen. You must each decide in your heart. Now, this is where the, the, the transformation and all that kind of stuff is taking place up in here. Okay? You must decide in your heart how much to give. Let's go to the praise thing. If all in your heart to give the Lord is... Yeah, hallelujah. What do you think are you what are you gonna get in return? God is not gonna come anywhere where he's not invited, including your heart. Okay? You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. No one's pressuring you. This is free. This is a free thing. Worship is free. Your giving is free. If it's a dollar, Cool. If it's 10000 hey! <laughs> okay, but we want to be able to give to God our worship, our time, okay? Our praise is everything, especially when you ain't got it like that. You get to praise it, and God will bless you. You get to praise it, and then you can give generously. I ain't going to say no names, but I'll be watching how y'all be giving. And I'm like, dang, I'm going to put that in one day. And one day I'll get it. So until then, I'm going to raise my hands up. I'm going to give God some glory. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to smile. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be grateful. And most of all, I'm going to invite him in my space. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Doesn't mean he don't like you or love you if you don't. But for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. That's it. That's it. Amen. That's Amen. Now, when the choir gets back up or during this part of our service when we are freely to give, think about what you're doing in your heart. Think about, is this grudgingly? If you say to yourself, this is my last and I'm going to put it in anyway, eh, you can go ahead and keep that. If your praise look like, eh, go ahead and keep that. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it's boring and God wants cheerful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Stewardship. Our methods of giving through credit or debit, yes. sale, um, that are the uh, Pastor Lady SS at gmail.com um, and www. 
www.todwc.org. Go on there and press the Give button. That's not the only way that you can give through your tithes. There's other things on there as well for our youth ministries, for other different things. So give generously. And most of all, as we go through this service, let's go ahead and give God some praise generously. What a marvelous spiritual message. And I think she's priming herself for next Sunday. Let me, let me just give an announcement. This is real talk. I want to do a few things. And that is, please place on your calendar, Facebook family, you're welcome to attend on next Sunday here at 2 p.m. We're going to have four of our ministers doing their maiden sermon, their first sermon. And they will be licensed. And so family and friends are going to be here. So I'm going to encourage you, if you want to get a good seat, you better get here early. Because if you get here at 2, you may be standing up. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Um, we have several of our ministers. Um, and I'm going to ask them to stand and hear present in our service today. Um, Minister Brandon Howe. <laughs> Minister Brashanda Jones. She just here speaking. Minister David Hill. David Hill. And Minister Badazi. Amen. The God of the Lord. I've already met with them. I've been teaching them and training them. They're more than ready to share the word of God. Um, now, they're not going to preach for 30 minutes. This is their first sermon. This is a disciplined sermon. They have at least a maximum of 10 minutes each. And, and so you can give back some time, but I'm sure they're ready to show God his praise. So let's take a few moments and we could just get some soft music. We want some quality of music. When you see Mr. King running around here in the church, and I tell you, I'd rather see a child run around the church than run around on the outside. Because God's going to bless him. Put your hands together for Mr. King. Amen. Can we get some soft music? This is our two-minute fellowship. Someone you haven't seen today, let them know how much you love them and how much you love God. Amen? Come on and embrace them. So good to see all of you here this morning.
Certificate of Baptism. This is to certify that Nala Blake, Nala Blake, 
was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 29th day of October, and it's signed by Executive Pastor Dr. Shirley Clark and the Senior Pastor Dr. Richard Clark. And she will get this as soon as we see her. Put your hands together for now. But the two that are present here today would like to just honor you and thank God for you because we learned that baptism is a symbol of your inner change showing publicly on the outside what you have done and it's symbolic for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What you're saying to the world is that I have been born again and I'm going to the water not just to get wet, but it symbolizes when I lie down under the water, I'm burying that old man, that old woman, and I'm rising up to walk into the newness of life. Put your hands together for Alexis Alexander. Her mom is present with her today, and her mom is one of our newest members as well. Somebody got a picture of this? God bless you. church, but we function like a mega church, and we're so happy for this one brother that showed himself to be so faithful. He's part of our media ministry, and I believe he's been training intensely to be a part of our singing ministry, and so we're praying for Robert Steve III. Put your hands together for Robert Steve. to the inner circle now. Amen. Again, let's give God a round of applause for what he's doing. Come on, praise team. After we will have heard again from our praise team, the next voice will be that of our speaker, Dr. Shirley Clark, and God is just using her for his glory. Pray for her that God would use her mightily. I'm waiting for tiptoe anticipation because I'm waiting for my mail. Say, Dr. Shirley Clark, I'm waiting for my mail. God bless you.
Are you totally into Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you totally yeah. into God? Yeah. <laughs> and I know your broken pieces. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God for his awesomeness, Amen. for his greatness, and for another opportunity to stand and be used by him to preach a word to this thy people. Yeah. Honor to our um, senior pastor, Dr. Richard Clark, to all our friends, family, and guests. It's just good to be here. Yeah. We woke up again this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't just wake yeah. up, we woke up in our right mind. Yeah. With a sound mind. Yeah. We didn't need help to put on our clothes. Now, that's why I don't understand why Rashawn, the minister of Rashawn, had to get up here and do what she did. Yeah. Because the presence of the Lord should have been here when you got here, and then it should have exposed. Because yeah. you got a lot to praise God for. I watched Baby King just running around. Amen. And I remember every month when every doctor, every doctor visit he mom, his mama went to, they said he wasn't going to be dead. He wasn't going to make it. That's why we give him the opportunity Hallelujah. to pray. So when you see him doing this, that's because I told his mama, you keep praising God and you keep telling the doctors who your God is. Amen. And so it rubbed off on King. And we just love him and we thank God for him. Amen. Amen. Such a good God. Amen. Good to see my friend, uh, Mr. Vinay, here with us today. I woke up this morning and I said, you know what, I'm going to have to call him and tell him he has to come next Sunday afternoon. And I walked in, he beat me here. God is so good. I pray for a lot of people when I wake up on Sunday morning and when I haven't seen people in a while. I start talking to God about them. And then I'm ecstatic. I'm happier than a pig in slop. <laughs> Because Shirley Jr. is in the house today, y'all. I got a lot of daughters, but that's my baby. That's my baby right there. That's my favorite right daughter. I wrote that on her birthday card, and I went, oops, you're my own daughter. She said, I've been trying to tell you that all my life. She don't like sharing too much, not her mama anyway. She about to be big 5-0, so Ooh, we're just excited. But I look younger than her, right? I look younger, right? Come on. Oh, you're coming out in here. Oh, that's my sister. All right. All right. Amen. God is good, and we have a word for you today. I have been charged by the trustee, by Elder Child, that I need to preach like I've never preached before. Because he told me that I don't preach at the temple the way I preach when I go outside. So I'm going to have to show him a little something. The Holy Spirit got to show you a little something today. But I did serve you notice that if he don't speak, I don't speak. Amen. 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 Stand with me and turn in your Bible to a very familiar passage of scripture. Either 61, Old Testament. Yeah, that's a good one. Isaiah 61 is right after Psalms. Everybody know which, uh, it's right after Proverbs. Proverbs is right after Psalms. Okay, I'm already burning up, so I don't know what's going on. Rashonda said, the heat is not on, Mama, it's you. <laughs> no, 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 no. 61, verse 1 through 3. I'm really going to focus today on verse 3, but if you take note, verses 1 through 3 is one long sentence. Yeah. So when you read scripture, you don't stop at a question mark or, or exclamation mark or semicolon. You read the full sentence. Now, verses 1 and 2 will work its way into the message, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. But my focus is really going to be drawn from verse 3. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that means the spirit of God covers me. Yeah. And he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, yeah. to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, yeah. mm -hmm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all you who mourn, 
to counsel those who mourn in Zion. Remember that word, Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Uh, Minister Vishanda was saying, when you start praising God, the oil will just start running, and it'll keep running. Amen. All of joy for mourning, mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I want to read three again. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And if you don't mind, just a few minutes, comfort in Zion. You may be seated. Comfort in Zion. Zion, just so we know, because we hear the word Zion all the time, but most of us don't know what Zion is or where it's at. How many people know what Zion is and where it's at? Be real. Pastor Carl didn't even put up his hands. What I told you? <laughs> he over there frantically writing. I know you know. Zion is where God is. Where God is, there's comfort. Regardless of where you are, what you're going through, what you've been through, what you did yesterday, or what you did today, or what you do tomorrow, Zion is where God is, and if you have a relationship with God, then you are where God is, and then you are in Zion, and you will be comforted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So once you get to Zion, that means that you are in a right relationship with God, and if you're in a right relationship with God, he will comfort you no matter what you're going through. So it is time now for us to ball up into a knot when the wind blows the opposite way or we want it to blow and crawl up in the bed and begin to cry and throw in the towel. You are Zion. You are comforted wherever you are, whatever you are going through, you are with God. I don't care if you lost your job. I don't care if you got bad news from the doctor. I don't care if your child just went to jail. I don't care if you're not feeling good. I don't care if you can't get out of bed for three days or two days out of a week. If you are with God, you are in Zion, and you are comfort. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Minister Peter. I got one person that agrees. So y'all will get some mail today, so get your mail today. I want to encourage us today. And I just want to encourage us with three things. Yes, yes. God has planted you in Zion. Yes. God has planted you as a tree of righteousness in Zion. Mm -hmm. It is for one purpose, and that is he to be for him to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So you're planted in Zion. You're a tree of righteousness so that God can get the glory. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. You're not there yet, but I, I, you catch up with me. You catch up with me. Come on. When you get into a circumstance or a situation, as they used to say in the South, or a situation that troubles you, and you don't understand, and you really want to start asking God a whole bunch of why. Don't ask God why. Just say, Lord, I'm in Zion. Yeah. With you, yeah. comfort me through yeah. this. Because yeah. yeah. everywhere God is, there is peace. Yeah. Everywhere God is, there is joy. Yeah. Everywhere God is, there is love. Yeah. Everywhere God is, there is patience. Everywhere God is, there is understanding. Everywhere God is, there is healing. Everywhere God is, there is deliverance. Everywhere God is, there is freedom from captivity. I'm not making it up. Isaiah just said in the Word. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Peter. Amen. Thank you, daughter. I got two, so next, next time I got to get three, okay? <laughs> 
still no matter. So, so when Isaiah, who is a prophetic writer, pastor told you guys, I think he preached out of this book a couple Sundays ago, and Isaiah has 66 chapters. It is called the Little Bible. And so in the first 39 chapters of uh, Isaiah, he is preaching a whole lot of doom, and if you don't get your act together, oh, God is going to be sick, he's going to yeah. destroy you, you're going to be uh, taken into captivity yeah. from a 39 chapter yeah. doom and gloom. Yes, yes. And then we get to chapter 40, he begins to preach comfort yes, sir. to the people. Come on, sir. So, uh, when you get home, I'm just going to read the first three verses. No, maybe not. I don't want to read you. So in voice, verse 40, chapter 1, chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak comfort to Jerusalem. You are my Jerusalem. I'm speaking comfort to you today. And cry out to her that her warfare is ended. Your trouble is over. God says to Israel. Come on. Her iniquity has been pardoned. God says, I forgive you. After all that disobedience, after all that uh, stuff that you did, worshiping other gods, and then running to me to get you out of trouble once you were worshiping other gods, and I have to turn loose your enemies on you, now you want to call on me when you need me. Where were you when you didn't need me? Your praise is every day, 24-7. So God said, that's okay. My love trumps all. That her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sin. Oh, how I love God. Oh, how I love Jesus. And so Isaiah, being a prophetic writer, uh, he, uh, he writes about God's grace and his deliverance beginning in these last 27 chapters of Isaiah, which begins with chapter 40. Today, we're almost at the end. And that message that he wrote in Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, wasn't just for Israel, but it was speaking a coming salvation to everyone through Jesus Christ. Because if you don't know, let me tell you, if you run on over to Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus goes into the temple, and they hand him the Bible, and he sits down, and he begins to read. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captives uh, free. So everything I just said here is 61. So Isaiah speaking prophecy of salvation to Israel, and he is projecting and preaching about a type of Christ, of the gospel that is yet to come yeah, to yeah. save all mankind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Be comfort in Zion, Be comfort. he says. Yeah. And uh, where I really want to focus today is you're planted. You are a tree of righteousness. I did not say you were a tree of perfection. I said you are a tree of righteousness. Because you are righteous because you have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ that is shared on the cross. And when God sees you, he don't see you in your mess. He don't see you in your sin. He don't see you in your lying. He don't see you in your drug. He don't see you in your drinking. He sees you through the blood of Jesus and you are righteous. He said you are a tree of righteousness. And I'm going to plant you in Zion. And I'm going to comfort you. And I'm going to take care of you. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you go through. You, you just really got to read the Old Testament to know how much God had patience he had with Israel. How much they did. How many times he had to turn loose their enemy on them. How many times he got them out of trouble time and time again. That's love. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. God is saying to Israel, God is saying to you, no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more. No more. Your sins have been forgiven Thank you, Lord. through the blood of Jesus. No more. I pardon you. I forgive you. Every time you sin, forgiven. Every time you sit down on God, forgiven. Every time you say, you know what? I can't do church right now, forgiven. 
Every time you say, Pastor Clark and Pastor Shirley make me sick, forgiven. Every time you say, you know, they too hard on us, forgiven. Whatever it is you want to do, whatever it is you want to say, it really don't matter if God's now planted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Zion. Yes, in Zion. You should be like a tree planted by the river of water, bringing yes. forth its yes. fruit in yes. its time, yes. in its season. Yes. So you're in Zion. And you got everything you need because there's God is in Zion. You're comfort in Zion. Yeah. You have a relationship with him. He says, come on, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Be what I created you to be. Be who I called you to be. Yeah. Rise up in Zion and be somebody. Yeah. Rise up in Zion and show somebody my glory. Yeah. 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 So the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Yeah. He's anointed me to preach the gospel yes. to them that mourn in Zion. Ooh, ooh. That mourn. You in Zion, mm -hmm. you're with God, and you're mourning. Uh-oh. Talk, talk. Mm. That's a good. Yes, you are. Yeah. Because when God plants you in Zion, he said, I'm just putting you in a place of safety yeah. because I'm going to be here with you even when you mourn. And so this mourning started with Israel because they were under the hard taskmaster of the Roman Empire. They were mistreated. They had to work hard. They had to bring all their money in and give it to the, to the leaders. And they were really being mistreated. So there was a lot of poor people back in Israel days, back in the Roman time when the church was established. There was a lot of broken hearted people. There were people being put into captivity. They were taking their money. So God said, I know you've been mourning for a long time. You've been suffering for a long time. You've been abused for a long time. You've been talked about for a long time. You've been mistreated for a long time. You've been hungry for a long time. You've been looking for love for a long time. But God said, I planted you in Zion. Be comforted. Because I'm with you even in the midst of your mourning. Even in the midst of your struggling. Even when you're in Zion and you don't do what I tell you to do, I still love you. I'm still going to comfort you. And so he planted you there. So you're there in Zion. As a righteous tree. You got to see these signs. Hanging around, yeah, yeah. All the Jehovah names, Jehovah mm -hmm. Siskanu. Yeah. <laughs> you, Lord, is my righteousness. Okay. So if He planted you in Zion as a tree of righteousness, then your righteousness is your righteousness. No need to worry, no need to fret. Yeah, yeah. But a tree. Can I talk about the tree for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Minister Vershawn and I just really, we talk all the time, we prayer partners, so she felt it. I, I was feeling it, but I, I didn't have a mic. So she felt that the spirit wasn't really roaming freely and moving the way it had been in the last few Sundays. And so she got up and she started talking about it. And she started talking about lifting up your hands. So when you get home today, if you have trees at your house in your backyard, go out and look at the trees and you would notice that the uh, trunks are, the, the arms are up. When the wind blow, the leaves move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the wind blow, the leaves fall off the tree. But the trunk remains in a praise position. Yeah. Woo! You are, God is saying that you are a tree of righteousness. I've planted you in Zion to give me praise. Yeah. To lift up your hands and keep them lifted up. No matter what you're going through. That's why baby King is here. That's why baby King runs around praising God. Because when his mama was carrying him, I said, keep your hands lifted up. Keep your head up. Keep praising God. And watch what he does. The tree never puts, the trunk never puts its arms down. That's good. My, my, my. That's good. Amen. Can you imagine? Walk around the house every day like this. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord, for protecting my children. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me safe. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that's over the throat. Just praise him. Just praise him. Uh, can, can you imagine my arms already hurting? I got arthritis in the, 
in the shoulders, but I don't care. God got that too. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a tree planted in Zion. I'm a, tree, I'm a tree planted in Zion. I, what you say, say that again. Praise him anyhow. Come on, sir. I got one, two, three, four praises. Come on. Five praises. Six praises. Come on. God ain't doing that for you. You're not in Zion. He has not been pumped in you. He has not been dying your tears in the mouth of a loved one and pain in your heart, pain in your body. Praise him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what happens when you praise God? Yeah. When you lift your hands up and praise God, you grab and bring down your yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you don't know what will happen in your house if you got people that are unsaved in your house and you walk around like this. <laughs> you can change the atmosphere. You can change your attitude. You can change your relationship with God. You're dying. You're okay. You've been planted. But God said it so I can get some glory. So how do you give God the glory? How do you be that tree of righteousness? You got to hear the gospel. That's it. That's it. Yes. You got to hear the gospel. Yes. Yes. You got to hear the word. You have to receive the words. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. And it is the Bible says, I'm authorized to preach the gospel to the poor and break the yokes of the captive because I am anointed. God has uh, equipped the preacher. Yes. Yes. Oh, don't just say yes now. He's equipped every last one of you to preach the gospel wherever you are. You know how you do that? You live the life of Christ in front of everybody you know. In your house, on your job, at your bank, at the bathroom, in the backyard. Go out in the middle of the street or your neighborhood and give God some praise. Yes. And when they see you, they yes. see the glory of God. Yes. And that just maybe yes. they will come running. What yes. must I do? Yes. I want to be like you when I grow up. Yes. Now we don't walk around going, I want to be, I want to be like my, I used to sing that all the time. I want to be like God. I want to be yes. like Jesus yes. when I grow up. Yes. My God. So he's planted you. And he's planted you as a tree of righteousness. I can't believe it. I'm almost done. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. That, you, that he Ooh. may get the glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's your mail. You don't have nothing else to worry about. Because you're in the place of God. With God. Sometimes. Sometimes. All the time. I'm in Zion when I'm sleeping. I'm in Zion when I wake up. I'm in Zion when I'm mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in Zion. And yes, I'm in Zion when I'm cursing people out. Yeah, I'm yeah. You, talk. I yeah. you make me mad enough, you step on the right toe, you got to hear some Shirley. Yeah. Not Pastor Shirley. Ask Charlotte, she'll tell you. My, she said, my mama crazy. That's all right. I'm the boss. <laughs> I say, do it, you do it. No, I'm just kidding. But I just want to make a point plain. Even when you slip, trip, and fall, you're in Zion because your Zion experience is because of the relationship that you have with our great God. So give him glory. Give him praise. Lift up your hand to God. Tell him thank you. And thank you again. And thank him for your breathing. Thank you, God. So the gospel goes for it by the anointed preaching of the preacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, the gospel goes forward by the anointed lifestyle of God's people. Ooh, you're in Zion. You can get a bit of whatever God got. You can get a bit of his peace. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord. Give him his love. Yes, Lord. Patience. Yes. You are anointed yes. to yes. take the gospel. Yes. When I was praying for this message, I woke God woke me up early in the morning. And I was just laying hands on people. My, my, my. I was just laying, I was just anointed people. I was just laying hands on people. Because God is saying people don't realize. So there's two callings. There's a call unto salvation. When you confess sins and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. And you get the fullness of the Godhead. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So if you don't never get chosen to preach, you got the power of the Holy Spirit working down on the inside. That makes you powerful. But if God get ready to take it to the next level, he would also make you like Isaiah said, and like Jesus said, and like I'm saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm going to preach the gospel. Yes. The spirit of the Lord is upon you, preach. Let me show you. Here's a story. It's a true story. I was talking to Big Brandon, Brandon's dad on the phone, on Halloween night. And he said... He was talking to me, and then somebody came in the office, and they said, look at my costume. Now, he don't believe in Halloween. He's a Christian. Anybody want to guess what their costume was? They had on a plaid shirt with a T-shirt up under it, and they said, I dressed as you today. <laughs> His entire department saw Jesus in him and wanted to be like him, so every last one of them came as Vincent. That blessed me so. Yeah, yeah. That's influence. What a praise. For you to look so much like God and live your life in such a way that people want to be like you. I would turn flips up and down if everybody went out and bought them a black robe jacket and wore it next Sunday. Said, I want to be like you. I would just be happier than a pig in spot. <laughs> I'm from the South. I'm just from the South. <laughs> you are anointed too. You got so much power that you think that you're physically overweight and burdened down is not because you're overeating. It's because you're so full of God and you ain't doing nothing with it that it's weighing you down. God told me to do this, and I got to do this. Amen. Come on. You, you anointed. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed. Hey, to preach the gospel. You. You are anointed. Ask me why I'm using water. That's what God said use. Purify. Clean. It's the word. You're anointed to preach the gospel. You are not, anybody that ain't a preacher want to get anointed, get in the aisle. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed. Nobody want to be anointed? Okay, sit on down. I'll pour the water all over me. Because it's been prayed for. It's been blessed. It's not just water. God says you are anointed. The Spirit of God rests on you to preach the gospel. You are anointed to preach the gospel. Start living a life of Christ and live and preach the gospel in your house. In your house, preach the gospel. In your house, preach the gospel. In your, house, preach the gospel. In your car, preach the gospel. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed. You are anointed. Oh, you are anointed. You are anointed. Take the anointing. Go home and take the gospel. Go home. Get your deliverance. Hallelujah. You're dying. You're dying. You're anointed. You're dying. Let it go. You're dying. You are anointed. You are anointed. Let the Lord. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord
You don't want no blessing? You better get something while the kid is good. God, yeah, God called you to. You, you, you need to be used to. You, 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 know, you go a lot of places. And you can show God in such a way that some of us can't show what you can say. You can say. That ain't no mess. You can say. I know you can say. I got your, all your stuff with my phone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all feel it? Yeah. You feel like you raise your hand up, please. And give God some glory. Give God some praise. Tell the Lord, I don't want to be the same when I leave here today. I want to learn how to praise you in such a way that people will come running to me and fall at my feet and say, what must I do to be saved? I want to be like Jesus. You got your comfort? God said, I planted you in Zion with me. All I need you to do is glorify me. Yes, Lord. In your walk. Yes, in your talk. Yes. In your life. I got you healing. Yes, I, 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 I got you delivered. I got your breakthrough. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, that's y'all praise you. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't see no trees. Yes, I don't see no trucks. Yes, you are afraid to put your arms up in God's eyes. Come on, hey, put your arms up. Praise him. Praise him. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Glorify God. Glorify God. Glorify God. Glorify God. Say the Lord if you feel and every one of these individuals. So they're all planted in Zion. To be used for God's glory. To show him glory. Everywhere they go. To everybody they meet. Our goal is to have people show up like us. Now it's up to you with what that looks like. My granddaughter got her degree from the bride. Keep your hands up. Keep praising. Don't stop. She wrote the dean's list. Trying to be like a nanny. I'm a smart cookie. I'm just gonna tell you like it is. I'm really smart. So I wrote on her birthday card. I said, I'm so proud of you because you I said, I'm so proud of you, uh Shirley Julia, because you're just like your mama. And I know she desired just like your daddy. I know she desires to be like me. I watch my granddaughters when they live with me, and I'm in the in the mirror and they just like like, why y'all looking up in the mirror? Because I want to learn how to put my makeup on, just like you. Yeah, yeah. Somebody is watching you. Yes, Lord. That's right. Let them see the glory of God. Let them get delivered by watching you. People should be asking, Kathy is blowing this church up. Because David and his crew came to her house to clean her house, and she was talking about this church. Then David showed up, he brought his family, and then they brought Vashonda, and then Vashonda brought some, and then David's mama showed up, and, and then uh, uh, Vashonda brought Alexis, and then Alexis brought her mama, and then Vashonda brought her cousin. All that started because Cassie was talking about God while they were cleaning her house. Don't tell me can't do it. He's worthy to be praised. You are a tree of righteousness that God has planted in Zion to give him glory. Yes, 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 yes. You can be seated if you can. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory to God. Everybody stand. Everybody stand, Jesus. I don't know if you're here this morning, but comfort in Zion. That was your cue. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't have a church home and, and you're looking for a place to just lay your head and to have a covering, the doors are open for you. And if you want to become a member and be added to God's church, come up and sit in one of these seats. Maybe you're already a member and you just said, I mean, I, I, I want to rededicate my life. Nothing's wrong with coming up and rededicating your life 
But if that's you and God's speaking to you and you've never said yes to the Lord, to the Lord in a public way and in a certain way that God, God wants you. He wants you. Facebook family, if you're listening and you're on this service today and you don't have a church home and you want to become a member of this church, text us on Facebook Live or just send us a message at pastorlady.ss at gmail.com or either pastorrichardclark11 at gmail.com and we'll get to you and we'll love to add you to our church. If God is speaking to you, this is serious business. These gentlemen that, that are standing up here are serious for the Lord. They have made a dedication that God is going to be first in their life because he made them first that he's going to do something miraculous and so wonderful. He can heal you too. He can do it just now. If you've been out of church for a long time and you've just come back and you're saying that I need restoration or I just want to restore and I want to make sure that I'm in good standing with our great God. If that's you, the door is open for you. Been out a long time that you said, Lord, I'm coming back home. I already remember, I'm already saying that's you. There was a young lady that was here in Sunday school. Did she leave? Are she with the children? There was a lady that was here in Sunday school. She said she wasn't a member, but she wanted to become a member. Is she here? Oh, God bless you. Is that, is that what, what's her name? Nisi. Oh, she's already a member? Okay, God bless you. This is how you can make it public. You may be seated if you can. You may be seated if you can. God is doing great things. I'm so happy to see my daughter here in service today. She loved God so much and more than the heart can say. According to the Bible, when they were praying, they came before God using offering. Offering is uh, provoking God to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not bribing God, but it is something to provoke God. 
That's number one. Number two, there are two kinds of prayer. Coming down to the top and the top to the down. Mm. When we are praying from down, it means we are complaining to God. Mm. We are explaining how much we are toiling. Oh, you know, the devil has to make it has too much. That's we are praying to God. That's we are coming from down to the top. But when we are praying from the top to down, we are praying from the authority to the problem. It means we are praying from the, the, the seat of the throne to the problem. We are telling the problem about our God, not the problem about our God. So, relax. Relax. God is in control. Can I tell you something? Very tremendous. God loves you so much. He dies on the cross for you. He pays all the price. So you need not to cry. You need to relax, to rejoice. This is the time. It's just a matter of the time. This is a matter of time. You see what God is going to do something. Okay? Okay, uh, can we can we give all our offering? I want to pray prophetically. Can we give our offering? Let us pray. Can, can I have the offering? Yeah. Let us pray. Lord, you are God yeah. and you remain to be God. Yeah. We are uplifting this offering before. Yeah. As we came to worship you, as we came to honor you. Yeah. Now, through this offering, I stand upon, I stand against. I stand against every sickness, every declaration of sickness. The, to whom the report do you believe? We believe the report coming from the throne of living God. I command every sickness. I command every sickness. I use the blood of Jesus to cancel all the reports. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command, I, I brought out all the reports. The report given by doctors, the report given as a sickness, the report given by the devil, in the name of Jesus, command. I command all sickness to God. I command all sickness to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are the one, you are the healer, you are Jehovah Rapha. You deserve the glory, oh Jehovah God. I cancel all the report. I cancel all the report. In the name of Jesus, I release healing. I release healing. I release healing. I release healing. Sharama soke rebe shando raba. Rama mando riaba sata raba. Rebe do shete ria mando raba ba soke riaba. Rebe shete ria mando raba ba. Ria masato rama sata raba. Ria mando rebe 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 rebe. Rebe shete ria mando raba sa. Rama soke ria mando riaba sata. Rebe shaka rama sa ya. Ria mando rebe rebe soke ria mama. Receive healing. Receive healing, receive healing, receive healing in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I command healing, I command deliverance, I command deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shaka Rama Sando Robo, Rama Mashikel Yaba Baba Shando Raba, Rama Mashando Robo Sekel Yaba, Rama Mando Yaba Sekel Yaba, 
Rama Mashekhe Yama Basaya. I command healing. I command healing. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Receive healing. Shara Mando Rodo Sekhe Yama. Rama Mashekhe Yama Mando Rodo Saya. By the blood of Jesus, I cancel out the recall. By the blood of Jesus. Oh Rama Sekhe Yama Baba Saya. Sekhe Yama Mando Rodo Saya. It is well. It is well. Shakara Masaya and Rabasa. She paid him a man of 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 She paid him a man of Rabasa. She paid him a man of She paid him a man of Rabasa. She paid him a man of Rabasa. She paid him a She paid him a man of 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 I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command all evil spirit to go out. I command all evil spirit to go out. I command all evil spirit to go out. Evil spirit, take out. Oh, Shaka Ramasaya. Shake it, Yamamando Rabasaya. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Ramama Shake it, Yabasaya. Ramamando Yabasiki Yababa. Robo Shake it, Yamando Rabasaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, can you give all, all the glory? Can you give all the glory? Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout hallelujah? Shake the rib of silence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, it is done. Say it is done. Say it is done. It is done in the name of Jesus. My wife preached this morning, comfort in Zion. Zion is being comforted right now because healing is taking place. Thank you, Minister Peter. Healing is taking place. And if you don't believe healing is taking place in his word, in John 15 and 7, he said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask anything and it shall be done unto you. Philippians 4 and 6, the angels were nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. And when praises go up, blessings come down. God is healing in this church this morning. He's moving this morning by his spirit. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, 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 yes. God is truly great. His worship is great. Come on, give God some praise. table has been set. Did I just say this? The table has been set. God is pleased and he manifests himself in such a way that we don't have nothing to do with this. But it's only God. Every now and then he will show up move in a mighty way. How many know that God is a healer this morning? How many know that he's a strong deliverer? How many know that he can make a way out of nowhere? Oh, come on now. I want you to leave here with me by doing this. Leave here. So if you want God to live in your home, go home and do this. When the goings get rough, do this. When the roads get rough, do this. When the hills are hard.
words are trying to do this. But the doctors have given you a negative report. Do this. Because I want to say this. God really has the final report. And God has the final say so. I'm standing with my wife, with Minister Peter, and with all of you, with my daughter, that the report is going to be changed. This Only a God can do that. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're claiming it, we believe in it, and we're leaving it in your hands. And Lord, as, as Charlotte leaves today, put pep in her step and glide in her stride. Help her to realize that as David said, you, she can rest in you. Help her to rest in you, Lord. Whenever she lay down her head, she's resting in you. Wherever she's go, she's resting in you. Believe in you for the miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Before we leave, before we leave, please pray this week for the four ministers that are going to be licensed on next Sunday. Amen. Pray that God would use them for his glory. They're going to be sharing their word that they've been working on a long time. Some have been working on for over a year. But God is moving in a mighty way. There are some other people in this church, and I just want to say that, that God have already moved and led to move from one extreme to another. And if that's you, I just want you to stand up in your faith. And stand up in your ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. And may he keep you in perfect peace. As you keep your mind stayed on thee. Give us a go on a home you.